hello guys in this video we are going to see how can we further enhance this reconstruction by uh, say making these lines orthogonal to each other so one of the defect that you can see over here is that this thing is not perpendicular to the ground it should have been perpendicular to the ground so we are going to work on these things now and try to get a much better reconstruction which is very close to the uh, true reconstruction so that is what we are going to see today so for that we will need uh, some of the concepts of the absolute conic w so uh, for that you can look at this video over here uh, that in that video i have explained uh, with complete basics about what is a conic and what is the absolute conic so or else you can just go uh, with these results that are listed over here with that you'll be able to understand uh, what is going on in the video so these are a few results that we have so we have omega which is called as the uh, absolute conic so it is given by k uh, in uh, k inverse transpose into k inverse where k is nothing but the intrinsic camera matrix so if you see the camera matrix so here we have the intrinsic camera matrix and the extrinsic camera matrix so this thing over here is k and you can see that omega is only dependent on k it is not dependent on the rotation of the camera or the translation of the camera it is solely dependent on the intrinsic camera matrix so that is one important point to note the other point is that if suppose you are given with two points x1 and x2 and they are uh, meeting so this is our camera center so if this is our camera center this is our image plane and there are two rays drawn from the camera center to the image point x1 and x2 so the angle between these rays the cos theta of that angle can be given by this formula so you can see that there is this omega sitting over here so with this formula what we can do is we can constraint on the rays uh, that we have so we can uh, we can give the algorithm that say i want this and this to be perpendicular so i want this to be 90 degrees the angle between these to be 90 degrees so giving that to the algorithm we can give such a constraint to make a absolute conic such that it takes care of this perpendicular condition that we have over here so we are going to see this in more detail in the further slides but for now i'm just giving you a, a brief uh, recap next uh, there is this omega uh, this omega is a symmetric matrix so you can see uh, that uh, omega omega transpose will give you identity and there are few things that if you know about those things then you can further reduce the parameters over here so if k is known to have zero skew so if you see the intrinsic camera matrix so there is this skew parameter that you have so if there is no skew if s is equal to zero then what will happen is these two values over here will become zero so this is one way to reduce the parameters other thing is if the pixels are square so you, if you know that the x length of the pixel is equal to the y length of the pixels then you can also say that w11 is equal to uh, w22 so yeah both of both places over here you get w11 so these are some important things that uh, will help you to find out uh, omega okay so now our task is to find out a good omega that will uh, ensure that the lines that should be perpendicular are perpendicular in the reconstruction so let's see how can we do that so our task is now to find omega so we need a omega which knows which lines are orthogonal so what we can do is we can select sets of orthogonal parallel lines so we can select this this and this we know that these are parallel lines in the real world so this becomes one set of parallel lines that will give you one vanishing point v1 then this gives you another set of parallel lines which will give you a vanishing point v2 
and then this will give you another set of uh, van uh, another set of parallel lines which will give you v3 the vanishing point so now you know that these parallel lines should be orthogonal to these parallel lines and also these parallel lines and and the same is valid for these two cases also so all the three sets of uh, parallel lines should be orthogonal to each other so this is a very important constraint that we can put so we can say that any vi transpose omega vj will give you zero so like this you can have different equations and find out the parameters of omega so this is one uh, simple uh, technique to find out omega but there are also other ways by which we can find out omega so if we know what is the uh, camera calibration matrix that is this uh, intrinsic matrix if we know this matrix beforehand then you straight away get omega by this uh, formula so there are some camera calibration techniques by which you can uh, know what is the uh, intrinsic camera matrix of a uh, of a particular camera so there are different methods uh, that are also listed in uh, this book in this section so you can also refer to that uh, section over there right so to move forward now we know how can we find omega so to be more precise we know uh, a omega which will keep the lines that are uh, that we want or to be orthogonal uh, orthogonal in the real reconstruction uh, that we have so we know omega now so now it is uh, shown that if we have a transform like this so given we have a camera matrix p now so this camera matrix is our current camera matrix which is uh, giving this kind of a reconstruction so given that we have a p a camera matrix which is uh, giving an affine reconstruction we need to now transform this p this camera matrix p such that it now gives a metric reconstruction so uh, making these lines perpendicular making these lines perpendicular so that is preserving the orthogonal uh, things preserving the orthogonality is what is known as a metric reconstruction so now from an affine reconstruction we are going to go to a metric reconstruction or also known as euclidean reconstruction right so it turns out that there is this formula h inverse uh, is equal to a 0 0 transpose 1 which which when applied on the camera matrix p it will give you the metric transform that you want so we'll see what is this a so for now let us first see this notation so here p is the camera matrix which is giving you the affine reconstruction and there is this transform homography transform h inverse so this is a 4 cross 4 matrix 4 cross 4 homography transform which will uh, give you a a new transformed version of this camera matrix which will ensure that orthogonal lines are orthogonal so we can represent this p as mm we have seen this representation throughout the series and similarly we can represent this pm as mm mm uh, so this this can be the representation for this and this can be representation for this so you can see that over here so our camera matrix p is k into some something over here the extrinsic matrix so now if you multiply these both together you get this m uh, over here and if you multiply these both together you get this vector over here so that is uh, what is written over here okay so now what is this a and what is this transform let us see that so if you multiply this h inverse with m that you have over here so you will see that you get mm as ma so this m will get multiplied to a because a is a 3 cross 3 matrix so what will happen is that a will get multiplied to m and this zero will get multiplied to this vector so 
this mm that you have will only constitute with ma okay and we also know that mm that is this thing is also belonging to some kr so this k is the intrinsic camera matrix and this r is some rotation matrix so this m can be again uh, decomposed into some kr so i hope this is clear so we have two equations for mm mm is ma by this uh, equation and mm is also kr by this uh, we know the basics from basics okay so we can say ma is equal to kr now doing a little uh, reconstruction over here so just uh, saying ma into ma transpose so we can say squaring on both the sides so by this what we get is this and you can see that there is a rotational matrix over here so since this is a rotation matrix it is orthogonal so r r transpose will give you identity so this will go and we are just left with k k transpose so if you see that our omega the cone uh, the absolute cone had this kind of an equation so this is nothing but omega inverse you can see that so this is nothing but omega inverse and you get this thing over here and then by doing some more um, shifting of terms so taking this m inverse over here taking this m inverse over here you will get this formula so you get one equation for a and a can be found so this is a a transpose so now a can be found out by taking the cholesky de decomposition of this matrix so just by taking the cholesky decomposition of this matrix you can get a which you can put over here and you get your transformation matrix which will transform the given affine reconstruction to a metric reconstruction so i guess this is clear so now finally after doing this transform this uh, transform you get a better looking reconstruction so this may not be the real reconstruction still there may be an ambiguity of the size so it is quite possible that you get a smaller house or you can get a bigger house but at least you uh, can see that you uh, you you are getting a proper house orthogonal lines are orthogonal parallel lines are parallel so like this finally we can have our house reconstructed like this so this is the complete journey we were given with two images with that we found out some initial correspondences with those initial correspondences we found out the fundamental matrix now with the fundamental matrix we can get a dense correspondence that is given any point in this image we can uh, get a line which is known as the epipolar line uh, in which if we search the corresponding point we will get the point somewhere so you are reducing the 2d ambiguity to a 1d ambiguity next uh, we also estimate one possible pair of camera matrix p and p dash from the fundamental matrix so this first possible pair of camera matrix is then uh, estimated with the fundamental matrix which can give you a reconstruction somewhat like this so this is not what we want you can see the parallel lines are not parallel and this is a problem so then by giving some informations about which lines should be parallel you transform this reconstruction into an affine reconstruction so we go from there to here we come at a affine reconstruction now so now by the knowledge with which Uh, parallel lines are orthogonal with that knowledge we can uh, come up to this kind of a, a reconstruction which looks like a house so that's all for this whole reconstruction uh, journey and uh, that's all for this video thank you so much for watching thank you